And this is a, a drawing by William Blake of Dante meeting Beatrice. And um, so it's one of my favorite drawings of, well, us meeting our, our inner authentic self uh, at the point that Dante meets Beatrice, he's really fully synthesized on a personal level. Um, so we'll begin. The spiritual philosophies of Rabindranath Tagore, the Bengali poet and Nobel Prize winner of literature in 1913, and Roberta Sejoli, Italian psychiatrist and founder of Psychosynthesis, are remarkably similar in their fundamental understanding of the relationship between the infinite self and the personal self. Despite their diverse cultural and linguistic inheritances, both men experienced a similar evolutionary process. Each managed to integrate his personal spiritual experiences with his knowledge of various cultural sources and spiritual traditions to ultimately synthesize a visionary understanding of the transcendental personality of humankind. Most striking is their shared view of humanity being bifocal in nature, and that spiritual realization is the ultimate awakening and expression through freedom of choice and creative activities of the infinite self within the finite eye or individual self. Tagore poetically described this reality as Jivan Devata, or the Lords of One's Life while Asajoli spoke of the relationship between the personal I and the self, which is fully realized through spiritual psychosynthesis. And I just say now that um, this painting is by Rabindranath Tagore. He started painting when he was 70 years old. And unless otherwise noted, all the paintings in this talk are by him. So to begin, with uh, talking about the spiritual philosophies, I like to encapsulize their, this idea of um, what makes their thoughts so similar by these two little uh, phrases that are quite powerful, <laughs> despite their simplicity. Uh, by Tagore, is it then true that the mystery of the infinite is written on this little forehead of mine? And by Asajoli, infinite joy inspires me. Rabindranath Tagore, poet, novelist, dramatist, musician, artist, and Nobel Prize winner of literature, visited Italy on three occasions. During his third visit in late spring 1926, he met Roberto Sajoli. And this is about what they would have looked like at the time of their meeting. Tagore's visit to Rome had been arranged by Carlo Fornici, professor of Sanskrit at the University of Rome. During Tagore's visit, Asajoli was Fornici's substitute interpreter. In this role, Asajoli accompanied Tagore while he was in Rome, Florence, and Turin, and would later publish an article recounting his impressions of the poet's journey. At the time of Tagore's visit, the literary response to his writings in Italy was already quite extensive. And here um, you see between 1914 and 1938, 24 books by Tagore had been translated into Italian, um, from English into Italian. At, as the Jolie refers to Tagore's life and work in his published books, there are 64 notes in Asajoli's archives that reference Tagore or his writing. And these are the three articles that Asajoli wrote on Tagore, um, all in Italian. Besides Asajoli's art, okay, so yeah, he wrote two other articles. Um, now this is a photo of some of the books written by Tagore in Asajoli's library in Florence. And um, he has most of the books in Italian. I found one in English, one book of poetry in English and the biography of Tagore's father in English in, in the library of Asajoli. Um, these are some of the notes. Um, we'll be looking at the, you'll see the one on the, my right, I guess it's your right as well, from Stray Birds. And it's the same 
uh, note only in Italian in the middle. So he, he was very busy with this aphorism and which we'll have a chance to look at later together. Mm -hmm. um, finally, in, the, in Assagili's uh, in Florence at the Institute of uh, Psychosynthesis is this copy of Tagore's presidential address to the Indian Philosophical Congress. And as you can see, it's dedicated to uh, Asajoli and then signed by Tagore in, in his Bengali name on June 6, 1926, which is when they, they met at a personal later private meeting at that day. So um, upon their meeting, we can easily imagine the younger Italian psychiatrist's enthusiasm for the great Bengali poet and musician. Besides being world famous after receiving the Nobel Prize, Tagore was Asajoli senior by 27 years, possibly evoking feelings in the latter of meeting a spiritual father. But per perhaps more importantly, at the time of Tagore's visit to Italy, Asajoli saw him as having the unique ability to embody a synthesis of Eastern and Western cultures and humanity. Now, you have to understand in 1926, Tagore was like a mega rock star. Wherever he went, he was easily recognizable. His books were very well read throughout Europe and Italy, especially also England. He was like, um, when, he, he went, he, when he was in Rome, he went to the Colosseum. There were 80,000 people in the Colosseum to hear him speak. So he was quite a phenomenon. Most of this is probably familiar to all of you, so I won't read this list. Um, but it's probably one of the reasons both men were so readily open to transpersonal experiences was that they grew up without any, uh, they weren't limited to a re religious doctrine, neither one of them. Asajoli's myriad of influences is best encapsulated by his statement Psychosynthesis has elements of Oriental thought, but does not adhere to any specific Oriental doctrine. It also derives much from Christianity and the ideas of Plato. The range of psychosynthesis extends to all that is good, wherever it might be. Um, Tagore's many influences uh, are listed here. Uh, his father was a socio-religious reformer and Hindu philosopher. Tagore was the youngest of 14 children. Um, the Upanishads were read by his family every evening. And of course he was familiar with other Vedic and Sanskrit texts. Uh, he actually wrote a book on the teachings of Kabur. And when he was older, he was very much influenced by the Baal's mystical traditions and songs. And of course, uh, Tagore grew up uh, under British rule, so he was very familiar with Western thought, music, and literature. He spent some time in London when he was young, 18, 19 years old. So he, he was uh, very familiar, obviously. He loved Shelley, he said. He loved the poetry of Shelley. Oh. Tagore's many influences include um, this is by one of his biographies. All sides of human nature found full expression in Tagore's actions and his art. The noble idealism of the Upanishads, the compassion and wisdom of the Buddha, the rationalism of Western thought, the love of the Vaishnavas, the humanism of Jesus, the inwardness of the great mystic poets of all ages and countries, Everything had its place in Rabindranath's worldview and his way of life. And I, I feel like this is also true of Asajoli. This, this could easily be said about Asajoli. So based on their spiritual experiences and their, their cultural and intellectual influences, we now uh, move, oh, first, sorry. Uh, just when I was making these lists, what really struck me are these differences between the two men. Asajoli was an only child. Uh, Tagore was the youngest of 14. That's quite a significant difference in one's uh, upbringing. Asajoli, of course, was a medical doctor, and, uh, at, but Tagore never finished school. He was a, uh, 
he was thrown out of schools. He had a tutor, which he would run away from. Uh, but Tagore did receive four honorary doctorates, um, but he never actually finished school. Asajoli, of course, grew up in the West with Eastern influences and Tagore in the East with Western influences. So those were differences I thought were interesting. So now we can move on to the spiritual philosophies of the two men. And Tagore envisioned a religion based on the divinization of the human being and the humanization of the divine. The aim of what he called the religion of man is to awaken the element of divinity that is eminent in each human being through the realization of one's true nature. Tagore called this personal God that dwells in everyone's heart, Shivan Devata, the heart of one's life. Furthermore, uh, Shiva Devata is the ultimate reality that guides the individual's life, inspiring every activity. So that is probably starting to sound familiar to you in some way. Um, he says also that one's awakening to Shiva Devata allows humanity as a whole to progressively evolve into a universal man the one who is omnipresent in all human beings. Furthermore, one's awakening to Shiva Devata, um, oh yes, okay, he called this the Purna Manus, the one who is only pre pre present in all human beings. In a remarkable similar way, as shown in his model of the human psyche, Asajoli posits a fundamental connection and relationship between the personal I and the higher self, or more simply the self. The self, like Tagore's Jiva Devata, is the meeting point of the personal and universal, of the finite and the infinite, and therefore appears half inside and half outside the oval representing the human psyche. In the center of the human psyche is the I, the inner still point that we experience as truly ourselves, a center of individual consciousness that is never lost when once united with the higher self. Similar to Tagore's belief that the infinite reveals itself through the finite, Asajoli believed that the self is a reality that can be directly experienced by the individual. And this relationship defines what it means to be fully human. According to Tagore, the infinite is best manifested through humankind as its finest creation. While the infinite seeks expression through its creation, and in particular through humankind, individuals are at the same time inherently longing for unity with the supreme being. Tagore's poems are full of this constant longing for the higher self and his desire for the eternal I-self connection of uniting with God. Um, and we'll see this in the poems that we look at together. In his two articles, Asajoli refers to a number of Tagore's poems to illustrate spiritual concepts. And um, we're going to look at one of the poems in your reading. Uh, but first, I wanted to introduce you a little bit to Tagore's poetry. Gitanjali, The Song Offerings, uh, was the book that really thrusted him into uh, the Western consciousness. It was important um, to, for us to uh, hear one of these poems in Bengali so, uh, so you can get a feel for the language that Tagore wrote in. And I guess I have to do a new share. So hang on while I do this. New share. Amar matha nato kuri dao he tumar choron dhular tole shakolo ahunkar he amar Dubao choke the jolly. Nijere kurite gour of Udan. Nijere kebuli kuri opuman. Aponare shudu geria geria. Gure muri poli poli. Shoko lohunkar he amar. Dubao choke the jolly. Amare najan kuri prochar. Amar apono kaji. Tomari chakorohe purno, Amar jibono majhe, 
যাচি হে তোমার চরম শান্তি পরাণে তোমার পরম কান্তি আমার আড়াল করিয়া দাঁড়াও হৃদয় পদ্ম দলে সকল অহংকার হে আমার ডুবাও চোখের জলে আমি বহু বাসনায় So uh, hopefully you were able to catch the jali, dali, and aji at the end of the, the lines and hear the rhythm a little bit, um, just to give you an idea. So in this poem, which is also, which is in your reading, so we're getting a little head start here, um, the, the poet clearly and relentlessly cries out for the higher self. Uh, with I want thee, only thee. That I want thee, only thee, let my heart repeat without end. All desires that distract me day and night are false and empty to the core. As the night keeps hidden in its gloom, the petition for light, even thus in the depth of my unconsciousness rings the cry, I want thee, only thee. As the storm still seeks its end in peace, when it strikes against peace with all its might, even thus my rebellion strikes against thy love, and still its cry is, I want thee, only thee. As Tagore's longing for the infinite becomes stronger with each heartbeat, his mundane desires distracting him from the divine grow more false and empty to the core. What is driving the poet's impassioned evocation is this undeterred will to unite with the immensity of the all-embracing and infinite love. So to conclude, I'd like to end with two more brief, but simple, but profound um, notes by each of the authors, by each of the men. And this one I really love. Thy infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine. So even though we have these very small hands, the infinite can, the gifts can, can emerge from these very small hands. And as a jolly, there are infinite energies latent in you, ready to awaken to answer the call. So I'd like to thank you for your patience and time. And just to say that uh, my, this, is, this is really a condensed, uh, quick version of the article that I wrote that will be published uh, at the end of the year in the Journal of Indian Philosophy and Religion. <laughs>